Hello and welcome to this training presentation that will cover Restore2 Mini, a tool used to identify physical deterioration in the community setting. The aim of this presentation is to equip any staff to use Restore2 Mini as a tool to identify soft signs of deterioration and communicate these more effectively. It's appropriate for all levels of care and nursing staff, and it can be used for both for those who are new to Restore2 Mini or as a refresher for those with prior knowledge. Also available to support this presentation are a number of external resources. Links to these are provided alongside this presentation. These include the Restore2 Mini tool itself in either A4 or A5 format, slides that can be used as an external training resource, allowing you to cascade training within your team and introduce Restore2 Mini to new members of staff, a taxonomy of soft signs in PDF format. And finally, this presentation incorporates a number of external three minute short videos about deterioration. These have been produced by Health Education England and direct links to these are also shared alongside this presentation. Restore2 Mini was originally developed for use in care homes. However, the tool is now used in a multitude of settings, not all of whom use the term residents and care homes. This resource so tends to use the terms resident and client throughout. Other terms used include carers, which is used to refer to any member of staff in a residential or care home setting engaged in caring for a, a client or resident, the term residential and nursing are taken to refer to all the different types of homes that provide care to clients or residents, including domestic domiciliary care settings. DNA CPR refers to do not attempt cardiopulmonary resuscitation documents. TEPs refer to treatment escalation plans, which are personalised recommendations for someone's medical care. A TEP may be informed by an advanced care document or an advanced decision to refuse treatment. These will be covered in your own organisation as appropriate. We'll start first of all by learning about what Restore2 Mini is. The tool itself is really simple and comprises just two elements, which are the soft signs of deterioration, which support carers to identify potentially unwell residents or service users, and a structured communication tool to help you get your message across. This is what the Restore2 Mini tool looks like. Usually a simple paper tool that you can print and have ready to use. If you notice any soft signs or are concerned about a resident or client, you can grab a form which gives a list of prompts and record your observations. Your workplace may have made Restore2 Mini available to you via a digital tool. Either way, the principles and process to follow is the same. Whether you work in a care home, domiciliary care, assisted living, extra care or any other form of community care, there is no reason why you wouldn't be able to use this tool. It is a tool that adds structure and a framework to what you already do as carers and helps you to communicate any concerns better so that you can be heard by clinical staff. Care settings that have implemented Restore2 Mini were able to ensure that interventions took place earlier, which in turn meant better outcomes for residents. In this part of the presentation, we'll be learning more about soft signs. Soft signs are the early indicators that someone may not be as well as normal. We've all experienced this. Think about a time when you were last unwell. How did you know you were becoming unwell? How could you tell when it was getting worse? Did you feel more tired than usual? Or perhaps you felt sick or hot? Here's an exercise. Pause the presentation and write down as many soft signs as you can think of. Did you get any of these? What else did you identify? Here is an index of soft sign indicators of deterioration. 
We may not always word them in this way, but I'm sure we can recognise a number of these either in people we care for or maybe even in ourselves when we've been unwell. A PDF copy of this index is available alongside this presentation. To supplement this section, please view this short video from Health Education England on soft signs of being unwell. You can either view it now and then come back to this video or view it afterwards. A link is provided in the description. If you look after people with learning disabilities, we also encourage you to view the video recognising deterioration in people with a learning disability. A link is provided alongside this presentation. We're going to do an exercise now to put soft signs into practice. Molly is a fun and outgoing 78 year old. She mobilises with her Zimmer frame and loves to socialise with other residents and staff in the lounge. When she's not talking, she's an avid reader of romantic novels. You can find her with her head in the book in the conservatory. She often jokes that she's too busy to sleep. She goes to bed late and tends to get up early, often having a cup of tea with the night staff before they go off duty. If Molly was your person that you care for, what might her soft signs be if she was becoming unwell? Take a minute to think about what they might be and I've divided it here into either a physical presentation, her mental state, her behaviour or her abilities. So for a physical presentation, perhaps her mobility might be reduced and she might drink less. She might become more withdrawn or less sociable. She might have reduced concentration, or reduced ability to read. And in terms of her behaviour and her abilities, perhaps she might become more tired than usual or spend more time in bed. These are all potential soft signs that you might see in Molly should she be becoming unwell. Here is the Restore2 mini tool where we record the soft signs that we've observed in our person. So using Molly's example, we would add her name, her NHS number, her date of birth, and we would fill out the soft signs that we've seen for her. We've seen reduced mobility, potentially drinking less, and sleeping more. This would then be stored in her care records. It's also important that we think, could this be sepsis? To supplement this section, please view this short video from Health Education England about sepsis and why it's so important to be aware of it. You can either view it now and then come back to this video or view it afterwards. A separate link is provided in the video description. In summary, soft signs are the early indicators that someone might be becoming unwell. Soft signs can be related to many things, including the person's physical presentation, mental state, or behavior and ability. As a carer, you are ideally placed to recognize small changes in the person you care for. It's good practice to ask the people you care for, how are you feeling today? By getting to know the person you care for, speaking with their family, friends, and carers, you can build a picture of soft signs that are significant, significant to each particular person. You should encourage friends and family to tell you if they notice any soft signs. If a person has chest pain, a suspected heart attack or stroke, call 999. In this section, we will help you to understand what information you should know about the person you care for. As carers, you know your residents best. Now you are more familiar with soft signs of deterioration it's important to think about what would be normal for your residents and record this so that others don't misinterpret soft signs. Where would you usually record this at your place of work? In this example, we know that agitation is a clear soft sign for Edward. So this has been recorded in Edward's care records so that any carer knows what a good soft sign would be if Edward becomes agitated. 
There are a number of documents that support people to have a say about the care that they would like to receive if they become unwell before this happens. To supplement this section, please view this short video from Health Education England about treatment escalation plans and do not attempt cardiopulmonary resuscitation. You can either view it now and then come back to this video or view it afterwards. A separate link to the video is provided in the main description. In summary, it's good practice to record in advance what is normal for the person. You should understand whether any treatment escalation plans and or DNA CPR decisions exist and what it says. You must know where these documents are kept so that you can easily access them in an emergency. DNA CPR does not mean a person cannot be treated for other conditions from which they may recover. In this section, we'll help you understand the importance of structuring your communication. Here's an exercise. Think about a time when you've ever had to escalate your concerns about a person you care for. How confident did you feel raising your concerns, both within your work setting or to the external healthcare professionals? Was it easy to tell your story? Did you have all the information to hand? Did you feel that you were listened to? Being able to communicate effectively is a critical skill for every carer. There is little point in recognising deterioration in someone if you're unable to communicate your concerns. It can be difficult to communicate with different groups of people, particularly when you are under pressure or tired. It is good practice to always try and plan your communication. Structured communication tools like SBARD can help you to ensure that information is transferred accurately and safely between people. Next is a video which explains how to use SBARD to structure your communication. To supplement this section, please view this short video from Health Education England about SBARD. You can either view it now and then come back to this video or view it afterwards, and a separate link is provided in the main description. This slide summarises what you would include in your SBARD. Under situation, this is where you would briefly explain the current situation. The key information needed here are your details, the resident and patient information, and why you're raising your concerns, for example, the soft signs that you've seen. Under background, this is where you briefly explain the background to the situation. How have we got to this point? What are the relevant conditions and treatments for this person? And are there any personalised care and support plans in place? Assessment. This is where you briefly summarise what action you've taken and what you think the problem might be. For example, you'd put any signs and symptoms that you've seen and any actions that you've taken, such as taking their temperature. Recommendation. This is where you briefly summarise what you'd like to happen next and what support you need. And then under decision, this is where you summarise what you've agreed. It's important that you include not only the agreed actions, but also who's responsible for those actions and what are the timescales for de delivering them. So let's put all this together. Here's our Restore2 mini tool, and let's use Molly, our previous example, to populate this tool. So this morning, we asked Molly, how are you feeling today? And when we spoke to Molly, we realised that she's got reduced mobility compared to normal. She appears to be drinking a lot less. And she's sleeping much more. This has prompted your concern and so now you're going to fill out your SBARD. The SBARD is really important to help you gather your thoughts and thinking before you make that phone call. So let's go through. First of all, what's the situation? I'm calling from Sunnyside Care Home about Molly Jones. Molly's drinking much less than usual. She's withdrawn and has reduced concentration. Molly has become less mobile and is spending more time in bed. Next, what's the background? Normally, Molly is sociable and mobilises with her Zimmer frame. Molly has diabetes managed with tablets and does not have a DNA CPR. 
Molly's care plan states that she does not have any limits on her treatment. Next, what's your assessment? I'm not sure what's wrong, but I'm really worried about Molly. And the recommendation? Please, can you advise me what to do next? It's absolutely fine not to be able to diagnose Molly, but what you can do is articulate that you're really worried about somebody and ask for help under the recommendation. The next step would be to record the decision. In this case, we've agreed that a GP will visit Molly by 7 p.m. today. Make sure that you record this under the decision section. In summary, using SBARD helps with communication, confidence and patient safety. Practice using SBARD every time you hand over information to a colleague or healthcare professional. Have the SBARD template available next to the phone as a prompt. Once you've escalated your concerns, you must continue to attend to the immediate safety and comfort of the person you care for. Carry out and document any of the actions you've been asked to take. There may be times that you need to call for an ambulance. Always make sure that you know your direct line telephone number. If possible, use a mobile device to make your call. When calling an ambulance, you may not be able to use the SBARD when speaking to the call handlers. However, by having planned your conversation already using the SBARD tool, you should have all of the necessary information to hand, so it's still very important that we use SBARD. If a person needs to be admitted, make sure your Restore to mini chart is copied or printed or electronically uploaded to the care record. Keep your original as a legal document. Here are some suggestions for embedding Restore2 Mini into everyday practice within your team. Firstly, you could incorporate Restore2 Mini into your induction for new staff. You could also use Soft Signs and SBARD as a subject for staff supervision sessions. And also, SBARD can be useful in other situations too. Staff could practice using SBARD with each other in handovers between shifts. Did you enjoy this training or do you have any feedback to share with us? Before you go, please just take a couple of minutes to leave us some feedback on this training. You can access our form using this QR code. Thank you. Thank you for viewing this training presentation.